So the million dollar question is, do you think Tom is going to come in at, at some point? Like, yes. Like he always does. I'm pretty sure he will. <laughs> or we'll hear a, an explosion of pans from the kitchen. Okay, so I, <laughs> so everyone watching, make place your bets. Will Tom be a part of this video at some point by his own choosing or not? not. Aloha, children of the night, and welcome to the Tiki Golf Club. And I am back with my friend Jeannie, the absinthe connoisseur. And um, the first episode that we did about absinthe was kind of like an overview, sort of like an absinthe 101 ish kind of thing. Yes. But um, in this episode, we're going to talk about. Well, you got you just got these in. Oh yes. And they're from they're from France, actually, right? They are. They are from Samur. And uh, we're going to try each of them yes we are and they're all from the same house so um when we talked about um absinthe and absinthe being brought back yeah. uh in you know the ball beginning to roll in the 1990s and into the early 2000s yeah. uh, and the goth connection to mm -hmm. absinthe we talked about how they started to make things again in europe before we got them over here yeah and this was actually, there's a whole big story behind the house and the man that brought these back to us. This is the Jade Liquor Company. Okay. And the Jade Liquor Company is actually helmed by an American. Oh, okay. From Narlands. Narlands. And um, who had a great love of absinthe and absinthe culture having grown up around the old absinthe house um old absinthe house is in the vucare mm -hmm. which is um <laughs> since i speak french in france i didn't know when you went to new orleans that it wasn't new orleans <laughs> and that it was not the vucare which is how you say it in French, yeah. but it was the Vucare. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I asked the taxi driver to get me to the Vucare, he says, what, honey? Where you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to go to the old Absinthe house, which is in the middle of the old French Quarter. So the company is called Jade Liquors, and it is captained by T.A. Breau. And he is a scientist, and he has dedicated most of his chemistry wisdom to recreating antique absinths so that we could taste how they really tasted. There are, really? lucky for us, some extant bottles from 1912 and a little before. So they have tasted it mm -hmm. themselves and they can, they've really tried to recreate what they tasted? Yes. So he has oh, a wow. library okay. in the at the company yeah. of antique bottles that were found when the company was purchased. Each one of these is an expression of a specific time and place. We have a new piece of absinthe toys yeah. to talk about before we move them back behind the bottles. So Yeah, there's actually several pieces out here. Yeah, so before um, I showed you an absinthe fountain. Yes, she did. And spoons and pontelier yeah. style glasses. Yeah. And torchier style glasses. This piece I'm going to show you is these middle three things on the top of the glasses. Okay. Which are called brulers. I'm probably butchering that more than likely. But they come in all different kinds. So. A, what, a brulee? A brulee. So the piece itself that is a brulee is this little cup contraption that sits on top of your absinthe glass. <coughs> I discovered in the time period, it was a great place to put your advertising. What makes a brulee a brulee is that it has a hole in the bottom. No, wait, let me see that. There's a hole there? There's a hole. And that's a single drip brulee. It's very small. Yeah, and it doesn't take much, actually, to empty out something. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. So this one has four. <laughs> And a fancy, a fancy place to put your sugar cube, and it sits like a little spider on top of the glass. In this one, on the end, your sugar cube sits inside the little tray here, yeah. and melts with, along with your cold water. So there's a, a sugar cube, then an ice cube, and then you pour the cold water over it. 
This one you can much more fill so it the water gets colder before it loshes down and the um, sugar cube sits there in the bottom and this one the sugar cube sits on the tray. Um, so that it's is, funny like all three of them do the same thing but all slightly they, differently it, and this is the old way with the with, with a we, spoon and the sugar on top and you just pour over with a little um, pitcher these are two of the best books and they are two editions of the same book and the co-writer on them is the man who created these absents and what's really interesting is he doesn't really toot his own horn in them he tells you about the history. He tells you about the distillery that he worked with. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't really say that much about himself. That's which is very a, humble of him. Very unusual. But what his bio says is, T.A. Brio, a native New Orleanian um, research scientist mm -hmm. who has dedicated more than 20 years to the research toward resolving the mysteries and uh, the myths associated with absinthe. He works... To lead the foundation of Jade Lick, uh, he led the foundation of Jade Liquors, which is uh, we can also give the address for. Um, and believe it or not, the German site is even better than the one in English for some strange reason. Um, uh, he helped to lead the effort to lift the nearly 100-year ban on absinthe, both in the United States and in France. And since 2000, his work has been uh, lauded throughout uh, the media and the press in Europe and Australia, um, History Channel. He's been, he's been all over the place. And he is the man that works with the Combier Distillery. So if you're watching this video, thank you. All of these come from the same place the same distillery. It is the Combier Distillery in Samur, France, which is in the Loire Valley. And the neat thing about this is it's one of the few distilleries that was originally an absinthe tour that is when it's in continuous production after that mm -hmm. to the modern era with all their original equipment. Wow. And their original equipment was designed and put in by Gustav Eiffel. The guy did the Eiffel Tower. Yes. And when you see it in copper, it's the Eiffel Tower, but for booze. It's amazing. You'll just have to so see that the is, pictures. That is, that is the quote of the night, Jeannie. It's the Eiffel Tower, but for booze. Yes. Shall we walk through the different absents? Yeah. I mean, okay. That's what I've been waiting for. So we're going to start with Le, Le Nouvelle Orleans. Are we going backwards? Are we starting at the beginning or going? Or we are starting in the order he created them. Okay. So, so what's the, the first one? The first one he ever made was Nouvelle Orleans. And so what they have to say about this one was yeah. that it was made in, on, in homage of the old Absinthe House and New Orleans and the spirit of the Americas. Okay. And what's kind of neat about it is this one of all of the ones that's up here is the darkest. And they don't add any unnatural colors. Any coloring you see in these absents naturally happen with the herbal distill distillation and maceration. Okay. So, but this one is, I don't know if it's easy to see or not, but it's absolutely it's green. like the smashed olive kind of color of yep. green. Absolutely. It's nice and dark. It's and really as you were pouring pretty. all those, that looks the greenest out of all of them. Yes, it is pretty darn nifty and pretty dark. You want to hand me a little glass from over there? So, <laughs> do you want the taster glass or the big one? Oh, I'll take the, whatever. Depends on how much of drinking you want to do, Jeannie. Mm-hmm. Here, I'll hand you the big one for now. Oh. So, <clears throat> votre santé. Yeah, what you, what you said. <laughs> so. What, is, what does that mean? Um, to your health, to, you know. <laughs> Vote for life. It means, to life, it means you know? let's drink absinthe. Yeah, pretty much. So it was the French. Um, it's the equivalent of cheers for French. Let's try this. So have a whiff first. Oh, wow. So I'm getting a lot of florals. Um, yeah. It's it's actually attacking my nose. It's like, it just smells like... Yeah, what? I'm getting a lot of floral. Um kind of a a little baking space kind of hit um and this is sound it sounds kind of weird but chocolate chocolate well let's try it and mint 
this is very very smooth everything this company makes um as i was scrolling down the stars on the various websites this one never out of a five point scale never ever gets less than a 4.5 so if you're gonna have to have a location it's new orleans yes this one is an homage to new orleans and is there a year attached to this then this would location? be somewhere about ni 1912 1912 incredible so you know if you were going to make a drink for your hometown that's a pretty good uh pretty good homage yeah my where i'm from would be boilo and if you're from where i'm from you know what boilo is his next experiment was jade 1901 okay. that's supposed to be paris during the belle epoque and what if you were Oh, Toulouse Lautrec. Mm -hmm. This would be what you'd be drinking. So, represents the second release from Jade Liqueurs mm -hmm. and was carefully reverse engineered from sealed antique bottles yeah. of one notable brand of the original liquor, of which several intact examples remain. In the Jade Liquor Archive of Antique Spirits. Jade 1901 Absinthe Superior was recreated as a tribute to a widely studied pre-ban absinthe, as it appeared circa 1901. I'll take the taster this time. You'll take the taster this time? Yeah, all the, because if not, I'll end up killing myself from all the absinthe I'm drinking. What a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jade 1901. Hmm. I get... A different nose than last time. I get much something much more fresh, you know, more yeah. um, more like you just stomped on the herbs herbaceous kind of smell. I'm getting more actual anise. I'm getting yeah. fennel. I'm getting hyssop. Um, uh, let's see what we have as our taste. They're both amazing, but the 1901 is this is better. This I have a feeling it's going to be hard to beat this. It's crisp uh, for the words mm. I'm thinking is just it's just crisp. Like all the flavors are just yeah, popping. Very, very fresh. Yeah. So what they have to say is the aroma is neat. It is anise forward, followed by other herbals, a detectable heat overall. So freshness right in the front of the mouth. Um, amazingly balanced. Um, it is so balanced that it's almost without character. Oh, I don't think so. I think that there's quite a bit of anisette character kind of waddling, waddling all over my mouth right now. Yeah, the first one was, the first, I'm drinking them both the, at the same time. The first one is definitely more mellower. It's more subtle. The tastes are subtle. The tastes are still there, but it's subtle. This, everything just pops. like. This one's kind of creamy. You know, fresh, yeah. right up in your face, but but creamy. It says, yes. a little swir swirl brings out the wormwood, followed by florals and other herbals and mint. Um, there's even an earthy note in the background. Everything is harmonious, a dense and very classy presence. I think that's about right. Yeah. And that, I think that's what I'm picking up in it. I'm glad you're here because I'm just like, yeah, it tastes good. <laughs> I like this one, Jeannie. Well, I have to sound like I know something, right? It tastes way better than Boilo. I, I I'm 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 mostly in it because I I love the um, I just love the flavor <laughs> and so and then you you discover you like all of the flavors and all the, the different expressions. I have found some that I've liked less than others, <laughs> but um, this is this 1901 is is a remarkably remarkably good. Supposedly. The one we're about to taste that has the Waterford Star in the middle. This one. Which one's this? This is what started this this um, this journey for me with Combier's and Breo's products. Jade liquors. When we were in the Loire doing all sorts of things, I had to go to this place. I absolutely had to see the copper works made by Eiffel. Yeah. I had to see what they're doing and so when we went in, I went in 
prepped to put all of the liquor that I possibly could carry home in my suitcase, all from this one place. Yeah. And this was the only one they had in stock. Ah. Well, it looks like you've already hit some of it, just saying. So, I have. And that's why you luckily are going to get the... It's your turn to have the large glass. Okay. So, uh, here's a... And so, Aolard Esprit is his third... Uh, expression. The finished product of that. See, isn't that, it's... Look at the lotion on it. Yeah, it, it lotions up really creamy and... Um, it looks like milk. Yeah, and, and but it, with a pleasantly kind of peridot green. Um, lovely. So what they have to say about Esprit Eulard, Absinthe Superior, it represents the first absinthe released by Jade that was painstakingly reverse engineered specifically from a sealed bottle. So the story of Esprit Eulard is it's rooted in the late 19th century at the time when one of the world's most prestigious absinthe distilleries was at the zenith of its existence. This distillery crafted products that were subject, subject to widespread acclaim and international export and at the time of the ban. This distillery had earned the distinction as one of the largest absinthe producers and considered by many absinthe connoisseurs to be one of the finest brands. It is not it is not certainly on par with the most respected brands, almost in absence that boasts the quality of this particular original brand, which they, of course, are not telling you. And um, we can dig it out in the book and, I, and, and, uh, and, and out them. So this is supposed to be a famous, faithfully reproduced pre-ban 72. That's 144 proof. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's try this. Voltra Sante. What did she say? <sighs> this one's way different than the other two. It is. Wow. It's different. So, whereas the... What am I tasting, Jeannie? Okay, so what I get out of this is I get baking spices. I get um, like it's really spicy. A, a little bit of allspice, like you went to Grenada. Um, I get hyssop. I get a nice round fennel hit right yeah. right between the eyes. Um, I get... Um, this one is harsher than the other two. Well, this is also 144 yeah. proof. <laughs> Whereas the others, you might have, you have a 65 or a 69. This one is 144 proof. This one, they there. Every single one of the original claws are still in it. So if you added more oh, water to this one, this is it's. I mean, again, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 harsh compared to the other two, but it's still smooth to drink, though. Yes, but this one is like you know, it it. They don't pull any punches. It is the original strength. This is the one that would make you blind. I think I'm starting to hallucinate. I wish I could talk in Technicolor. So, shall we see what the Wormwood Did you ever see that video? Did you ever see that video? There's a video from, it's like from the 50s where they were doing like tests on like regular people and they have this like housewife from the 50s and they have her like drink, like take acid, like LSD. And then they, and then they'd like talk to her like, all right, so what do you got going on? And she's like, I wish I could talk in Technicolor, you know? And it's just like, I'm like, oh, I love that line. The thing I noticed mostly with this one is, you know, we haven't talked a lot about mouthfeel. This one, it kind of rolls around your mouth and you could almost chew it. It's really, you know, it's really there on, on, your, on your tongue and on your palate and kind of hanging out with you longer than the other two. So for me, that's yeah, what I have I friends that are like that. <laughs> it's the strongest out of all of them, Jeannie. I will say that. Well, you know, I'm telling you, when they say things about how the modern era, we party hard and stuff like that, you know... I I don't like I thought, really like think I, we could keep like I would, like I would, the Bella Pop. I'm like, <laughs> like for the first two, I'm like surfing. I'm doing okay. You know, wipeouts going on. And this one here is just sort of like, okay, you know. He, he, wow. So, so for me, this is, um, I, had, I have only gotten to taste two of these. Yeah. Three of these I've never tasted before. I've only ever had the 1901 and the Aolar de Spree. So after so, we have all three, all these, I want to... We'll go back and we'll we'll see how we all how they all rate up with each other. But yeah. that is just wonderful. I'm telling you, 
maybe in another life, I was hanging out in some Paris cafe completely dissipated. Yeah. So. Whew. What's next? What's next? It's this one, right? Yes. So. This one. J. Terminus. So, J. Determinus Oxygeny. Oxygeny. Absence superior. That's the data girl named Oxygen. All right. No, so, this is the fourth and final in his Let's Make It From Something Else French line. Okay, so it finally arrives after several years of historic sleuthing, botanical research, and patience. This mature, handcrafted spirit represents the final release of the Jade and Liqueur's portfolio of historically accurate absence. J. Determinus ex, ex, Oxygeny, yeah. Absence Superior, has uh, created as an homage to one of the most interesting absence uh, of the fabled Belle Epoque. There is actually a brand, a style in that time called Oxygeny, and there's a bunch of really cool antiques and things like that for them. And for years, I didn't know what that meant. Well, I found out what it meant. So, it is subjected to a special hot oxygenation process, originally believed to render the final spirit hygienic and therefore free of any potential deteriorous properties. So, if you were drinking this one, it was a health tonic. So, I'm going to get healthier drinking this. You are. You're going to get healthy as you get dissipated. I can't wait. All right. So, our, the, its own. it has its own character. It has a much longer maturation um, than the, all of the others. And let's see, it represents the most powerful expression of the spirit in the jade portfolio. Bold yet creamy, features a potent aromatic and a lengthy stimulating aftertaste that recalls the medicinal origins of absinthe. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not quite as good at Thomas porn, but I haven't made a big mess yet. I'm surprised he hasn't come in yet. Me too. Votre santé. Just the top. Okay, so here's to the healthful, purified liquor. I'm going to get health. This is going to lower my <laughs> blood pressure. It's different. It, well, whoa. It, that it's, is it's, really different. It's very, well, it's very, it's out of all of them, it's the smoothest with the least amount of flavor. But it's almost like. And this is going to sound really weird, but it's not in a bad way. No. Like somebody put hydrogen peroxide in this one. It immediately went to the very top of my mouth and stuck there with all of its flavors. How often do you drink hydrogen peroxide, Jeannie? <laughs> this doesn't taste anything like hydrogen peroxide. That's not what I was thinking of when I was thinking of. Well, no, what I mean is it, it's, it's got that same weird lift that if you were going to... Okay, well, I will say this, Jeannie. When I drink it, you get the, the taste of it right off the bat, and then it kind of just sort of goes away really quickly. Yeah, it goes like right it's like, up wow. the top, and then it goes... Woo, and it gets really and mellow it, really quickly. So it's like... It's the, like it's the mellowest one out of all of them. Yeah, it's like it, it like it, a tiny explosion. This is the smoothest. This is the easiest to drink so far. Although they're all very easy to drink, including the... the What's the, interesting is you don't really get the, the flavors of this one until after you've swallowed it. When the aftertaste on this one is larger than the foretaste and the aroma. This is Terminus ex, uh, Oxygeny. Um, the uh, appearance is an attractive light peridot green, no visible sediment. Um, almost fully loche, one to one. Lots of fairies dancing in the glass from the very beginning greens and other colors swirling around so if you're watching this if you're doing your absinthe ritual and you're watching your glass there'll be quite a bit of interesting loche action wonderfully balanced and room filling is the aroma a great uh, herbaceousness and sweetness this is i think this one of the sweetest ones we've had sweet anise and spicy minty wormwood white pepper and confectioner's sugar. Very complex and a very full mouth feel. Yeah, that's the thing I picked up on where, you know, it felt like it went right up to the top of my mouth and filled all of the crevices everywhere. Um, lingers a very long time, spicy and warming, extremely enjoyable. 
We got one more. We have one more. And that one is this one. Okay, so this one is different. 1898. So, really? Yes, and it is not a French style. It's not. It's not. It's a jade product. But so he's he's done his snapshot of France. These four bottles are his snapshot of France. This is the beginning of his new project. Where? Where are we going? We're going to Switzerland. Switzerland? I'm going to Switzerland. They had absinthe in Switzerland? They did. In fact, they were a huge absinthe maker. Um, in our first taste, do you remember I showed you Clandestine? Clandestine has a green little cousin that goes with her. Okay. Um, and there are a bunch of wonderful Swiss absinthe makers and we should have a swiss tasting one of these days too so the distillery of cf berger was founded in cuvee uh in the canton of neuchatel switzerland you know where the cheese yeah. in 1823 the berger distillery crafted several swiss style absinths the most famous of these being the cf berger 65 absinthe vert which earns its status as one of the premier absinths of the 19th century. Unfortunately, absinthe crafting at the Berger distillery came to a halt when the Swiss ban of 1910 and the distillery ceased all activities in Switzerland shortly thereafter. The brand name of Berger had afterward been purchased by Marie Brizard, the large French liquor company. You know, uh, Parfait Amour and a jillion other li liqueurs, they all belong to Marie Brizard. Okay. Um, Let's see, it uses it in, in, in its line of pastises and anisettes. Um, they're very famous for their um, pastis. Uh, this fine Smith's absinthe was almost lost forever if it not had been for the resurfi resurfacing of an original un unopened bottle, which the jade liqueurs was able to secure for preservation. Using proprietary analytical techniques, jade liqueurs has painstakingly resurrected the beautiful liquor from extinction. So this is Swiss style. Do you think it's going to be radically different? I'm not sure. Because my clandestine was radically different. So the little things that you see floating in your glass. Oh, I thought that was dirt. Uh, no, it's cork. What we discovered on opening all of these unstored <laughs> bottles, so these haven't been sitting around for years for us, yeah. was that the corks come apart. Every Almost every single one of them splinters out or destroys itself coming out of the bottle. That's great. These are all corked bottles just like they would have done in the time. They didn't do a twist off cap at the time. They corked it like a wine bottle. And, but I think that the high level of alcohol in the contents disintegrates the cork. That would be my guess. So the little bits and bobs in there are actually tiny cork pieces and shouldn't hurt a thing. Okay. Let's try this. Yes, this tastes Swiss. Tastes like Swiss cheese. <laughs> tastes like Swiss cheese. But remember, tastes like a ham sandwich. Remember the clandestine? Remember how it was smoother? It is different. More homogenous it, in character. It is um, different. Uh, it, it was different than all the French ones we tried. Remember? This one is more like clandestine uh, in 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 just kind of it's what's that what's body the, it, this is different this is way different than the other ones yes well look who it is we knew what's going here. on tom <laughs> so if you were to rank these genie how would you do it well i'm um because i've been thinking about this the whole time and i think i know how i'm gonna do it well i'm a training wheels off kind of absinthe drinker okay and i like bold flavors okay so my number one is going to be the Aeolard Esprit. That's my favorite. Okay. Um, I find the 1901 very quaffable. Mm -hmm. um, I like the roundness of the Swiss. Um, I find the Oxygene very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I would probably rank them Esprit, Oxygene. Mm -hmm. Nouvelle, mm -hmm. 1901, and 
I like the Swiss, but it's really the outside. Um, it, it's like the dark horse in the race. It's yeah. really so different from the others. I just can't put it in the same category. Yeah. I think how I'm going to go is I got to go with the 1901. I think that one's, that's my favorite by far. To me, it just, as far as absence is concerned and what I've tasted, it just tastes perfect. Followed by this one. Yeah, oh, you like the Nouvelle. I do. That one was very fresh. And then, and then I like this one. It's strong, but normally I like my booze strong. But I like I like that these are a little bit more palatable. Follow that, then the Swiss, mm -hmm. and the, the Oxygeny um, is my least favorite. It's really unusual. It, it's just that it's just it just tastes it's too sweet. It's too smooth. Mm -hmm. But they're all amazing though, and don't get me wrong, they're all incredible. And. <laughs> We got so much absinthe to drink here. It's ridiculous. Well, Jeannie. But it's a wonderful <laughs> problem to have. Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> and it'll go with dinner. So yes. that's okay. Exactly. So really enjoy absinthe. Find one you really love. And if you really like Or find these, five of them that you really <laughs> love. Nineteen oh one. So classic Parisian could be found in the cup of Toulouse Lautrec. Yeah, so Toulouse Lautrec, if you're watching this video, if you if you think that this tastes like what you were drinking, put a, a comment in the comment section below, please. He's not alive yet. No, he'll leave a cartoon <laughs> from Beyond the Grave. <laughs> so you may be asking yourself, how can I join the Tiki Goth Club? Well, there is no membership. There are no fees. Well, things have changed. For $15, you can become a member of the Tiki Golf Club. What this $15 gets you, it gets you your own membership card with your own number. You also get a couple stickers and a pin. I also have shirts for sale. These are $20, $5 shipping and handling. And I also have hoodies for sale that go for $40, $10 shipping and handling. If you're interested in any of this, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and there's a tab that says Tiki Golf Club. Just click on that and all the information you need is there.